What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Hyperlite install on the Sierra F250F. In the last video, we did all of the plastic components, the skid plates, the bash guards, all the engine protection. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing all of the hard parts. So this stuff is gonna really add some bling to the bike as well as some performance. I think you'll be surprised at some of the stuff that they offer and there's even more on the website. So let's get right into this. I'm sure you saw it in the title, but guys, we have a freaking lift kit for the bike. Now the biggest down fall of the CRF 250F is the ground clearance. It sits super low to the ground. I've noticed it personally when I'm going through the rocky sections or going through some roots, it's constantly getting hung up, the pegs are hitting, and that's not a complete deal breaker by any means. Honda really didn't design this with the gnarly stuff in mind, so it kind of just is what it is. It's marketed towards a beginner and it's meant for a beginner style of riding but it just so happens to do really good at the gnarly stuff as well. And just a little bit goes a long way. So these parts are gonna help out quite a bit. So the lift kit consists of this new clevis and you're gonna have to have a spring compressor to install this. And you got two different positions here. So once you get this installed, you can take it back to the factory ride height if you want to. They also give you a new bracket for the kickstand so you can have the proper kickstand length. And that's a big pet peeve of mine. I've noticed on different bikes, sometimes the kickstand's a little bit short, too long, so you can really fine tune it with this and that's a nice touch. Scott also sent out the Corona billet aluminum linkage. So this comes ready to go. It has all of the new bearings pressed in there, everything's sealed. I guess we can go ahead and open this. And this uses a spacer system to fine tune the ride height. So you can do a standard height, a one inch drop, or a one inch lift. And then you guys already know we're gonna lift this thing up. Not only is this gonna give you some extra height, but it's gonna give you some bling. This thing is pretty trick. Now the last piece of the puzzle in the lift kit are these fork top hats is what I'm gonna call them. It's just an extended cap for the top of the forks. And it also has a bleeder valve on top, which is a nice touch. So in total, these parts are gonna get you about one and a half inches of lift, which may not sound like a lot, but ask your wife, it's quite a bit. <laughs> Moving on up the bike, we also have some more billet aluminum parts. Guys, these are motor mounts. And if you remember on Alexis's bike, hers were all corroded. It's like the bike had sat outside. So these will never rust and it's gonna be a nice touch. I might actually throw them on my bike and she can have mine. But damn, these things look too good. We might have to order another set for her. And last, but definitely not least, we have the wide foot pegs. Man, I am so excited to have these. I've got some big feet, size 13s to be exact. And these stock foot pegs are tiny. It looks like they came off of the CRF 110 bike. But I'll show a little picture on the screen here and the difference. It's a night and day difference. It's gonna be so nice to stand with these pegs. It's gonna give you a lot more surface area and a lot more control of the bike. It's got these really sharp, jagged edges, so it's gonna grip your boots. And this is another anchor products so this is all under the corona name coronavirus this is one of the coolest looking things that's going to be on the bike we have a billet aluminum top triple clamp gives you four adjustable positions it comes included with the fat bar adapters so this thing is going to be super functional but man you can't beat the looks but that wraps up all of the hard parts that we're gonna be installing on the 250F from Hyperlight Moto. Scott, thank you once again. I'm really excited to get this stuff on here. So let's quit the talking and get to working. I know a lot of you are curious about the torque specs, so when I get a decent list together, I will put them down in the description below. But for now, I had to just cross-reference with other bikes. I use the CRF 230F, for example. But just use your best judgment while torquing things down. Less is sometimes more. This side engine mount, I actually had to find a couple metric nuts for the back of those two bolts on the top there because the original engine mount has the nuts welded onto them.
now it's time to get the rear shock out of the bike. So you're gonna wanna take the plastics off to get to that top mounting bolt. You need to loosen the battery box too so you can squeeze in behind there, but you don't need to take it all the way off. Go ahead and undo the linkage. Lift the swing arm up and the shock will drop out. Now this is definitely going to be frowned upon, but you can do it safely. I do not recommend it though, so don't hold me accountable. The spring compressor that I had did not fit this shock, so I used the old zip tie method. Just go ahead and tighten down a bunch of zip ties around the coil spring. Then you can loosen the spanner nut to get the tension off of the spring, and now you'll be able to get to that clevis. I also struggled getting this clevis off quite a bit. Turn the snap on into a snap off. That's awesome. Go ahead and back that locking nut all the way down where the threads stop and then use heat. They use red Loctite from the factory. So a little bit of heat, melt that loose and it'll come right off. Now to get the linkage out, you have to loosen the rear brake assembly to get that bolt out of there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. You might as well grease everything back up. Honda and many other manufacturers are known to go light on the grease during assembly. So lube everything up and start putting things back together. Now, as far as the lift portion of the linkage, you want the arrow to point whether you want a lower ride height or a higher ride height. You might need an extra set of hands for this, especially if you're going to lift it because you need to raise the bike up a little bit to get the bolt back through the linkage. Just follow the same steps in reverse to put everything back together and the bike is complete. Holy crap, guys, this thing is a monster. I am so surprised how big of a difference the lift kit really made. I gotta sit on this thing. Whoo! This thing went from feeling like a play bike to feeling like a full-size enduro bike. This is awesome. Let me try to stand up. Oh my, I have so much room in the cockpit now. The triple clamp risers just bring the bars right up where I need them. I have the risers in the furthest most position, so this is as much height as you can get out of one of these bikes, and I am blown away. This is crazy. We're gonna have to get the other bike out side by side and just compare, but it is way more noticeable than I thought it would be. The way these pegs feel too, this thing is looking and feeling awesome, man. I'm excited. I hope the camera does this justice. Dude, what the hell? This looks like a completely different bike next to the other one. Now this is Alexis's bike, it is bone stock. The only thing I will say is the tires are really bald so that's gonna affect the height as well. But regardless, that is insane. Look at that. Like look at the bend in my knees sitting on this one. Regardless of the handlebar setup, this thing sits so much lower. Compare that to this. <laughs> I think you can tell, just look at the difference in the bend in my knee. I'm six foot four and I'm almost straight leg in this bike. And that's the cool thing about the lift kit is you can go either way. You can run it in the lower position or you can run it in the higher position or neutral. 
So it's really versatile. It wouldn't take that long to swap out. I gotta get some shots of these things side by side because it is just night and day. I really hope you'll be able to tell on camera. Now this isn't gonna be a super accurate measurement by any means, but let's go ahead and see the difference in height between the two. So we're gonna measure from the ground to the lowest part of the skid plate right here behind the brake lever. We'll go ahead and say about 11 inches. And this is the lift. We'll go in the same spot. Oh my God, what? Dude, we're at 14. We're probably close to 13 if I pull the, dude. So let me do that same thing to the other bike. So this is about center right here. And I would say, yeah, around 10. That's insane. I mean, aside from the numbers, cause I know that's not the most accurate measurement. It just looks that much taller. That is a crazy difference. I thought one and a half inches like they stated was gonna be over exaggerating, but it is well over that. I would say closer to two and a half inches I got out of this bike. With the tires though, that might be more accurate than I think. Two inches at least is crazy. I am curious to see how this will affect the ergonomics and handling of the bike. I'm not gonna be able to ride it for a little while, unfortunately, so you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already, I'll be doing a full test, riding the bikes back to back in the same environment and just seeing the differences between the two. But I still gotta go to Bruce and get the suspension done. So we're getting that new shock in the rear with an external reservoir. We're getting his damping rods in the front. So we're gonna have a progressive style dampening in the front, just like the motocross bike. So we're actually gonna be able to ride this thing hard like I want to blown away that is awesome so thank you to Scott once again for offering these parts please check out the website if you have one of these bikes or you're interested in getting one that's going to go ahead and wrap up the hyperlight parts part two after this I am just itching to ride these bikes so we got to get out west but let me know your comments down below I'm sure there'll be some skepticism as with everything and I'm a little skeptical too until I actually ride it and see how it feels but just based on the looks and just seat of the pants feel I think it's going to work out pretty good and this is is a great option for the taller guys or even the shorter people out there if you want to lower it but i'm starting to get rained out here so i'm going to head back into the shop finish editing this video if you made it this far i appreciate you watching and until the next one always remember to live free and adventure daily